Hi, everyone, and welcome to a brand new interview that you're about to see. I interview Chris O'Brocky, a.k.a. Merman Christian. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for alerts when I upload new content to the channel, especially those with disabilities similar to mine. In this interview, me and Merman Christian talk about how he became a diver, how he became a merman, and so much more, including his Merman Monday podcasts. I am joined here by my fellow merfolk, Merman Christian. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. I'm happy to be here with our amazing host. So I, I can't think of a better way to spend a Sunday. And of course, you all know me as Lewis the host of this channel, Lewis's Adventures, but I'm also Merman Adventure of Philly, which is my Mersona. And we just did an episode of Merman Mondays about building your Mersona. So I think you're already off to a great start, especially from what you just told me before we got started here. So, and you have your tropical lay, very well done. Thank, thank you, Christian. And of course, we, we're going to be talking about a lot of things like how he became a merman, how he became a diver, and so much more, including his podcast, Merman Mondays, which he just mentioned. Yes, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's roll it. So, Christian, how did you become a merman and what inspired you to be a merman? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I'm going to say, you know, kind of the cliched thing. Oh, I grew up around the ocean, which I really, I really have grown up around the ocean. I live in Maryland currently, and I've grown up on the Chesapeake Bay here, which is a very large watershed on the East Coast. And it's also has an abundance of, of life. And it's also a very good um, supplier of seafood for us. Because we're famous for our Maryland crabs. <laughs> and, um, but I, you know, ever since I was a kid, I always loved, you know, I loved going to the ocean. We would go to the ocean every summer and I was always drawing whales and dolphins. And so when I was, oh gosh, I think I was probably maybe like four or five and I saw the movie Splash, which, you know, we all know, we all know what that one is. And then not long after that, uh, the Little Mermaid came out in the theaters in 1989. So, and it just, all of that just stuck with me. And even in going into school, I was still constantly drawing whales and dolphins and actually was kind of picked on for it the older I got. So, I mean, but, you know, I'm so sorry for being a, a science nerd here, but. Um, nah, that's when... okay. That's okay. <laughs> You're welcome to be a nerd on my channel. It's all right. <laughs> totally all right. I'm fine with that. Cool well, well with that. thank you. I, I'm glad I get a pass. But um, as far as when it, that was kind of the origins of me starting to get into, into ocean life. And I majored in marine biology in school. And, and then um, it was, it was around until um, probably about 12 years ago when I was, I was on YouTube. I was back in, you know, the early, earlier days of YouTube. And I came across this video of this woman and she was wearing this beautiful blue, uh, flashy scaled tail. And I was just like, and I just see her swimming around all this ocean life and whales and everything. And I was like, wow, okay, that's, that's amazing. So I researched her a little bit and that woman actually was Hannah Frazier. So, and it really, I, that's when I kind of discovered the mermaid community and there was a whole community of people that did this and just from then on I I just kind of sat back from afar and watched just kind of took process as much as I as I could like a like a sea sponge and then it was a re then it was January of 2013 and I decided I was going to become this this persona and character merman christian because when I started in this business, like the, the term professional merman, that that was wasn't really even a blip on the radar. Like, I mean, there there were some mermen around, but nobody doing what I thought could be achieved by these incredible women in this business, such as Hannah Frazier. And of course, one of your former guests, uh, the amazing Mermaid Linden. So yeah, speaking of Linden, I have my tail here. 
I'm oh, sorry. I should have gra- I should have grabbed one of mine with the Linden Monofin in it. So yeah, at least yeah, this is my very first tale. And and speaking of Hannah Frazier, I've I first seen her in the movie Scales, where she plays the yes. mother of the main protagonist. Yes, it's Siren. She plays the movie. the the mermaid <laughs> Emerald. Yes, that's right. And and of course, fun fact: Hannah's actually part of the mermaiding group that I'm in, Mermaid Mania. Yes, I, I I believe yes. I'm a member of that of that group as well. I mean, same that's here. I'm I'm part of that. Group. And of course, let let me give you a brief history of how I became a merman. Yes, please. I want to hear it. Because you know, you mentioned the Little Mermaid. That came out when I was like five years old. Mm-hmm. But of course, in the '90s on Disney Channel when they aired Splash, that's when I seen it. And of course, I didn't know that Daryl Hannah is autistic like I am, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool that she's the first autistic merfolk ever. Yeah, Daryl, then, Daryl's an amazing woman. And then years later, I ended up meeting my friend who would later become Mermaid Moya Opal when she was younger. And, and of course, as you, as you already know, she and I became good friends. And then, mm-hmm. and then almost four years ago, she introduced me to H2O, Just Add Water, and then I discovered its sequel, Mako Mermaids, which, along with her, and seeing Mako Mermaids, which has a merman named Zach Blakely in it, that yeah. also could, yeah, essentially it took, it took Moy Opal and, obviously, Mako Mermaids to convince me that I should be a merman. And, of course, thanks to her and Mermaid Ginger, the name Merman Adventure of Philly was born because of the fact I love going on adventures. And of course, it's also an extension of my YouTube channel. And not to mention the Philadelphia sports teams, including the Phillies. And yes, this headband. <laughs> right. I thought I used for my Mersona because of, of right fielder and designated hitter, Bryce Harper, who used to be at the Washington Nationals. That's who inspired me to use this in my Mersona. It's funny we have that little connection. Well, it's sort of a little connection there because when I was when I was younger, I was on softball and our team was called the Phillies. So I think that's I think that's cool. <laughs> kind of came full circle. Yeah, except except it's the Philadelphia Phillies. That's what we're called. That's what their baseball. That's what the baseball team is called here in in Philly. And when I won. And I got and and the tail that you see there, which is a Mer Taylor Guppy Caribbean Dream, I got that as a birthday present almost three years ago, but I couldn't swim in it because of the pandemic. Right. I mean after after Moya Opal got her her fin folk Andromeda tail, it, that's what inspired me to get this tail. And speaking of thin folk, I hopefully plan to get some thin folk tales too, because in addition to to a Mer Taylor whimsy, I want to get my hands on on those new tales that thin folk have, which of course allows you to use the mermaid Linden mono fin with it. Yes, our discover our discovery tales. We just yeah, launched those um, last uh, this past summer. Yeah. Yeah, because I like to get one in blue because of the fact I love blue and and the fact that. Blue is my favorite color, and hopefully I'll be able to do that, especially since I, I have a goal, which I'll tell you more about later, of joining Wands and Wishes one day as one of, as the first aquarium merman for them to perform in aquariums. Uh, and Wands and Wishes is such a great, a great group team, and I know a lot of the mermaids that are on that team, and I know the mermaid who runs the team. She's You mean so- Caroline? Yes, Caroline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually um I actually met some of them last March when they came here to when they came to Philadelphia to go across the river to Camden to perform at the Adventure Aquarium. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which of course I'm also a volunteer diver for, which I'll tell you more about when we talk about diving. Absolutely. I can't All wait. All right. Now we're gonna talk about diving. How did you become a diver? Are you a free diver in addition to a scuba diver or just a scuba diver and not a free diver? Um, Well, my, my, and I'd always wanted to do 
diving and scuba and everything. And it wasn't until I, it was actually, I remember this, it was my birthday, the week of my birthday in 2019. So literally right before the pandemic and um, one of my, um, my former team, the Maryland Mermaids, one of my girls, um, her family lives in Florida. So we went down there, um, they live, they're based out of Tampa. So we went down there, we signed up for this dive course and everything. It was a week long course and, and um, yeah. And then we just, we just did our dives and we got our certificates and, and I definitely want to expand upon my my diving I, I haven't had the chance to get back into it just yet because I mean we're all kind of bouncing back from this big pandemic so yeah but, um, yeah but it's I mean when I when diving to me is I feel like it's like the ultimate escape from the everything going on above the surface and I mean yeah when we're MERS we we jump into that escape well as well <laughs> excuse me <laughs> but That's okay um, but when it comes to diving, it's, it's like a whole, it's like an extra stem of that escape because with diving, you can breathe underwater. You can stay submerged and with all the life around you. And I just, I found it extremely just relaxing and therapeutic and, and I'm not to toot my own horn here, but That's okay. our instructor said that um, my, um, me and Sarah were the best in our class. So <laughs> and it, he was very well aware that we were merfolk as well. And he was always like, always making jokes like, you know, this is a different kind of fin you have to use. But I know this isn't what you're used to. And I'm, <laughs> but he, was, okay. he, he thought it was so cool and he had a great sense of humor. But um, I, we did about uh, six dives in Florida. So it was, I, I just, I can't wait to get back into it. That's one thing I did during the pandemic was some, <laughs> I stocked up on some dive gear. So that way, when it's time to do it again, I'm, I'm ready to go. And I have all my own stuff. Yeah. And speaking of me diving, I've actually been in love with diving since I was two years old. I got certified in 2006 and I had a nine year hiatus from 2007 to um, 2015. It wasn't until 2015 I resumed diving and I went to Disney World at, at Epcot and, and dove there. That was my fifth dive. And then one year later, I ended up joining this nonprofit organization called Dive Heart. You know, you know what I'm, let, me, let me go get one of their, their shirts. Be right back. Well, if he's getting a shirt, I'm going to grab a discovery tail. <laughs> I heard you. All right. <laughs> Got this ready to go here. <laughs> yep. You ever heard of Dive Heart? I have heard of Dive Heart, yes. Well, I'm one of their adaptive divers and ambassador divers. And by the way, Christian, you never told me who certified you. Patty, Nowy, SSI. I believe it's SSI. I'm actually a Patty open water diver, but I'm also a dive hard adaptive diver. Look. Yes. Yeah. Look at you. And you know, diving, it's not an easy thing to do. Like it's not an easy task. And there's so much knowledge you have to cram in there because, you know, I mean, it's, it's a dangerous sport and, and hockey. But it can be and, done. It, well, the only difference between diving and hockey is that, Diving can be done safely, but if you don't know what you're doing and you make one mistake, then yeah, yes. then you get the bend. I will or, say, I cave diving is something, that's where I draw the line. I, that's something I will not do. Well, that's <laughs> something that, I'm willing to do. Now, well, anyway. Well, you know what? You go for it and you take one for the team. I, I will fully support you in that endeavor. Anyway, speaking of, of dive heart, as you know, last month I, re I did my fourth trip to Cozumel with them. I'm so jealous. And, and of course, during my trip, I got to do a little bit of mermaiding. But of course, during the trip, when I, when I was swimming, and then later I did a photo shoot, both of my monofin straps broke, which I was able to tell Lyndon about. And then I was able to, after, and, and, my, and, my, and my fantasy tail had, to, and, and then the, and my guppy had to be patched up 
I know. I believe I believe last time I spoke to Lyndon that she she is working on how to make these straps more durable because you know I've been doing this for so long. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie that the Lyndon monofin's the most comfortable monofin I've ever it worn. It is so and same and here. I, <laughs> so I'm always mindful of every time I wear it, I'm like, oh, I don't want them straps to break, so I gotta be careful. Now now, of course, in 2016, that was my first trip to Cozumel. And then I did another one in 2017 and then in 2019, prior to the pandemic. And, of course, as you already know, which I mentioned, I'm also a volunteer diver at the Adventure Aquarium in Camden, yes. which, of course, which is where, the, where I met some of the mermaids from Wands and Wishes at when, when they, whenever they go there. And they'll be back in the spring. And I can't wait to meet them again. And I've met some of them on Instagram. I told them that I was a volunteer diver there. And they know that. And, of course, as for being a free diver, I'm currently a Naui confined water free diver. Because last August, I couldn't finish my open water free diver training because of the fact I'd suffered a nosebleed after having a sinus squeeze. Oh, gosh. Temporarily messed up my ears. That's not the fall of my instructor. It's just something that happened. Right. And I'm actually hoping to, I'm also hoping to get a scholarship with NAWI, which of course I had to do a lot of work, hard work with my instructor, free diving instructor, a woman named Nicole Zelk helped me with that. She also teaches mermaiding through NAWI. And hopefully if I do get this scholarship, I'll be able to do my training. And I think I know where I want to do my training, possibly in Florida and at Alexander Springs. Which is where Alexander's my a great place. Which is where my friend Mermaid Moya Opal got her um Patty Mermaid and Advanced Mermaid at in late November. She and speaking of Mermaid Moya Opal, I went to in 2019, I actually pointed her to my good friends at Scuba Delphia, and it's, and she got certified to scuba dive through them. Scuba Delphia, actually, I love that. <laughs> That's fantastic. And she's, also, and she's also working on her advanced diver, like she told me, if you've seen the interview, and I hopefully mm -hmm. will work towards my own advanced diver one day, because I, cause I tried to do that during my first trip to Cozumel, and it just didn't work out. It's just that, and the fact I'm trying to get back on my feet because you know i'm out of a job thanks to the pandemic yeah but in I the was, end i was as well for a while so i i, I feel you in the end i i and if i become a now mermaid instructor i look forward to teaching other people how to become merfolk Mm, mm, mm. I think you have just everything that you just told me i think this is you this is this is what it should be about is, you know, being in the, being a, a merfolk and being in this community, it's just setting these goals, not only to, not only to challenge yourself and better yourself, but just be an inspiration to, to anybody new and to just so many. And I just, I, I applaud you for Thank just having you. such a, such a, just a line of sight of everything you want to do. Like this is, this is great. I can't wait to see you just accomplish all of this. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And of course, what, do you plan to do your own advanced diver one day, Christian? Yes, absolutely. I mean, That's I, good to I, hear. I, it's good to hear. <laughs> I, I did highly... say I want to expand my palate. And you should also join Dive Heart one day. Once you get 25 or more dives, you can probably be an adaptive buddy and dive with those with all types of disabilities, which which they do work with all types of disabilities. Besides autism, they do work with people in wheelchairs. And they do work with 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 people who have have chronic chronic illness such as ALS or multiple sclerosis. I remember seeing a photo um, at, I can't remember what beach it was exactly, but they actually had a ramp that went, they had a, they had an accessible ramp for, for those in wheelchairs. And it actually went all the way in to the water and it had like protective 
um, protective siding around it. So, you but mean just rails? For, you mean yes, rails? Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I <laughs> see. What I, I was looking to say. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I seen that photo you, you speak of, but I don't know where that beach is. But yeah, yeah, but I just remember seeing that, and that just made me. That just it almost kind of brought a little bit of a tear to my eye, just seeing that they took the time to construct that, so that way those in wheelchairs could experience what it was like to just play in the surf and be in the surf of the ocean. And I just, I thought it was one of the greatest things I'd ever seen. And I, I believe I shared it too on my Instagram. So that's very nice. Next subject, um, oh, man. your podcast, Merman Mondays. So yes. how did, so how did you do this podcast and, and how did it, how did, was it born? Well, it was okay. So my podcasting days kind of technically started during the pandemic, like at the height of the pandemic. And I was doing, you know, a lot of a lot of everybody around the world had to take to social media to reach out and keep in contact with all their friends and their family and their jobs. And so I decided I was going to do, okay, I was going to do story time <laughs> with Merman Christian. I, I pulled my children's books from when I used to do parties and everything. I pulled those out. And once a week I would start, I would just read, I would read the book for anybody that, excuse me, that wanted to watch. And I, um, and then it turned into me reading excerpts from some other aquatic books. And then, um, then it was right around the time, I think it was towards more close towards the end of the year. And uh, my co-host, Capital Merman, he came to me and he was like, hey, I remember that you did this during 2020. So how would you feel about having a show with me about it, like with me on as well? And we both co-hosted and we'll have, we'll talk, we'll make it all things Mer related. We'll talk about topics. We'll talk about sensitive topics. And we'll have special guests on. And I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. So that was kind of how it was born. I mean, we had a great first year last year of it. And everybody really, really took to it. And that's really all you can ask for when you you have a YouTube channel or you have a podcast. It just people to listen and come, keep coming back. And, um, and everybody kept coming back. So here we are. Um, we are on season two now. So, and tomorrow uh, we, our next episodes tomorrow, and we have our first guest of the new year, which is Merman Z of um, the one at depths. And I can't wait to, I can't wait to, to, to guest star on your podcast too. Yes. Yes. I've done I'm other, gonna... I've done podcasts. I've done the Merman podcast in 2020. I also yes, here to here be. I also did Fancy a Brew with with Andy the Northern Diver who 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 has a wife who likes to call herself Allie the Mermaid. <laughs> but though she doesn't have a tail. That's okay. And, and of course Andy isn't doing it in right now at the moment because he's busy being a stunt man in the UK. Mm-hmm. He's also a, he's, as I said, he's also a scuba diver, and he's also a free diver. He did say to me, just like with me, that his wife also struggled with her equalization during the um during her free diving training. Right, I know that's I know that can be a challenge for many 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 that um when you start diving or just even diving deep on just doing free diving on a breath hold. I know usually we have a pool here where I live that's 13 feet deep. So I, every time I go down to the bottom of it, I have to, <laughs> I have to equalize a little bit just to get myself in that, in that set. Yeah. And that is, and that's why I'm, I'm itching to finish my training one day. As I said, now, the reason why I suggested that people such as, Moya Opal it's just that or myself is because we both would have a lot to offer for your podcast I full wholeheartedly agree that we will absolutely have you guys on thank you thank you uh, and of course you know because if you're going to do me it has to be separate yes I, I don't want it just to be about me and Moya Opal I mean I also want Moya Opal to when you have her on eventually, but of course, as I said, you have to talk to her first and see if she wants to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
it's really up to her, though. Well, we'll re- we will. Re- well, that's usually how we conduct our show is we have we always reach out at least about a month in advance to a future guest that we want to have and just kind of talk about everything our show is about if they haven't watched it and just and just really talk like, you know, make make this happen. Can we make this happen? So. So how do I find so how do I find your podcast? How do I listen to it? Well, you can watch it's currently on my on my Instagram under my my series tab and Jacob also has it on his or excuse me Capital Merman <laughs> for using mer terms. Um he also Capital has Merman. a tab on his so you can go back you can watch all of our episodes. We kind of a lot of them are on my on my channel but um Jacob has some of them on his as well so yeah just uh float float back and forth we're trying to fit we're trying to we're going to be organizing all of them soon so that way you have everything in one spot so yeah that's the plan so is it are you guys on apple we're not right, right now it's we do it as an instagram live feed so We, we wanted to do something a little different. And I forgot to say it in regards to me um, joining Dive Heart. It was also because of my mentor, Wendy Crown, who is also a, she's a master diver trainer and she likes to call herself a mermaid, even though she's not a patty mermaid and doesn't have a tail necessarily, but, or a free diver, but she does support me in my goal, endeavor, endeavors as a mermaid as a merman because i really do i do like to do it like you christian i really do and that's what that's that's what it's all about it's it's what's it's what comes out of here i have another question to ask of you before we wrap things up and and this is i always see you put on makeup and what is it like to wear that makeup as a merman and is this makeup environmentally friendly and safe to wear in the water yes i um i actually didn't i mean i don't really i don't put like millions of pounds of makeup on i mean if i'm doing like an event or if i'm at a convention or if i'm teaching a class somewhere i like i'll i'll do a little just once over just to make myself not look like night of the living dead so (laughs) (laughs) that's good um, but um i i really just you know do just simple simple eye just some some guy guy liner as as we like to call it um and yeah it's all it's all waterproof it's all safe and i mean i'm a i'm a tremendous animal lover so i that's you good know, i always try to i always try to be mindful of all that so i've seen some really horrific things of animal testing and I'm yeah like, no. that's not cool we're so. almost running out of time christian oh all right um Last thing, what advice can you give to those with disabilities similar to mine who want to be mermaids or mermen? Um, my advice is just um, you can do it. You can do, you, you want to be something, you want to hit these goals. Don't let anything stand in your way. I mean, you know, you ha- if you have that drive, then just get out there and do it. Do, do, do your research and just, just live your best life and make you know make yourself happy so yeah don't ever let anything burden you from from feeling um fulfilled in your life and inspire inspire others to get out there and do it too i mean you know just from everything you've told me today i'm 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 rooting for you my friend i can't wait to see you accomplish all this and break down these doors and you know, I, that's, that's, I, you know, I, I broke down some doors in the beginning at the start of my merman journey 10 years ago. So yeah, no, I, it's, it just, it makes me feel good seeing, just seeing how driven you are to hit all of these things that you want to do. So bravo. Thank keep you. Going, keep going. Thank you. You're welcome. And I thank you for, for coming on Christian. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm, I said this in the beginning. I'm glad we could make it work finally. <laughs> yes. And take care, everyone. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this interview, everyone. It was a lot of fun talking to, to him. And he 
you buy CDs. In the meantime, this is Lewis saying thanks for watching, everyone. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. Remember.